Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Jim Olson, Assistant Executive Director of the NTCA, and I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. I want you to know real quickly that we are setting a record for the number of people that registered, 498 registrations, and we're well over 220 attendees already. Um, thank you all. Really, it means a lot. Today's webinar is titled, Navigating the Grout Technology Maze. This educational webinar will review the evolution of ceramic tile and stone grouting materials, discussing when to specify each grout category, ranging from latex modified cement-based sanded and non-sanded grouts, epoxy grouts, and today's pre-mixed grouts. We will also be discussing maintenance and basic troubleshooting of each grouting category, grout category. Our sponsor for this presentation is Latacrete. Before we continue, there's a little business to take care of. Today's webinar will be muted. Please use the questions area on your computer to type in any questions. We will answer those questions at the end of the presentation. All of our webinars are available to watch at any time on the NTCA YouTube channel shortly after the webinars are presented. Please go to the NTCA YouTube channel subscribe and you will be notified of all upcoming NTCA videos including all technical webinars. We will no longer have them archived on the NTCA website. This will give you easier access to watch all current and past programs at your convenience. If the audio on your computer is poor, please call the number that was on your invite for this webinar and you can listen on your phone. Here we go. Today's speaker, Ryan Blair, has over 25 years of experience in marketing and product management, as well as 15 years in the construction industry, working for other companies such as Stanley, Black & Decker. Ryan has been with Latacrete International since 2012 as senior product manager for their grouts and sealant line. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, thank you, everybody that's called in. I uh, just want to say good afternoon. I um, want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully, everybody is uh, staying healthy uh, mentally, physically during these trying times. Um, and uh, we'll get to it. I want to uh, thank Hi, also the NTCA. I'm here. You can't hear me? I am here, Jim. Can you hear me? What just happened? I'm here, Jim. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Sorry, we had a little difficulty, everybody, but okay. we're ready to go. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Thanks, Jim. Uh, hopefully, everybody can hear me now. And just wanted to say uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you to the NCCA for giving us this opportunity to present today. Um, I want to say a good afternoon to everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, I can't believe the numbers. Uh, we're almost up to 300 people, which is fantastic. Uh, just to talk about grout. So I thank you. Um, I hope everybody's staying healthy uh, mentally and physically during these trying times. Um, hopefully we'll get to uh, see each other uh, back together very soon. God willing. Um, we'll get into our presentation here. And let's see. Um, so I know Jim alluded to this earlier, but uh, we're going to review uh, some of the history and the evolution of uh, ceramic tile and stone grouting materials. Um, we'll talk about when to use and specify um, each grout category, uh, ranging from um, Portland cement and latex modified uh, based sanded and non-sanded grouts. Through epoxy grouts, um, I'll quickly touch upon um, Furan grouts, and then we'll talk about today's premixed grouts, kind of the future of grout. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about maintenance and uh, any type of uh, basic troubleshooting um, and within the grout category uh, for each of these uh, types of products. So at the end of the session, uh, you should be able to uh, understand where and when to use certain types of grouts, uh, their limitations. 
Um, we'll discuss Portland cement. We'll talk about latex modified cement based grouts. Uh, like I said, both sanded and unsanded. Uh, we'll talk about epoxy uh, based grouts and uh, industrial grouts. And then we'll talk about uh, whatever, you know, whatever nomenclature you call it, uh, premixed, ready to use, or one step grouts. Um, and then we'll talk about, uh, you know, the, the uses of each style of grout. And uh, we'll talk about the TCNA standards and, and a multitude of other standards um, that you can utilize um, so you can find out more how to install, what to install, when to use it. All right, so uh, just getting into Portland cement. Um, you know, cement based grouts have been uh, available literally for thousands of years. Yes, thousands of years. Um, basically, uh, this masonry type mortar um, was basically a, a clay and lime and sand mortar mix. Um, that was kind of the early days of grouting. Uh, right here, you can see photos of the uh, Ishtar Gate um, from ancient Babylon. And that was made back uh, about 500 BC. So this, this has been standing and it, it still stands today. Uh, the grout's still there, uh, 2000 years old. And um, it, it's still a, uh, a, you know, just a, a feat in, in construction, quite honestly. Um, you know, back then, they did use some bitumen uh, for adhesion and for some joint filling, but once again, they basically used clay and lime and some sand and mixed that up and, and utilized that as their grout. Um, standard cement grouts uh, with, uh, I guess you could consider it limited chemistry. They, they fall under the ANSI A118.6 standard. Um, but through time, evolution, evolution of tile, uh, evolution of, of the manufacturing of tile. Um, we do have another standard in cement um, grouts and that is ANSI A118.7. And we'll get into those shortly. Um, also, uh, the installation of cement tile, uh, cement grout in tile um, work, um, there is a uh, installation specification called ANSI A118.10. Uh, which is basically a specification for both styles of cement grouts, uh, sanded on sanded, as well as 118.7 and 118.6. Um, as always, you know, we recommend following that to ensure quality installation and to adhere to industry standards. All right, so cement grout beginnings, I know I alluded to this already. Um, you know, these grouts were typically two parts sand and one part Portland cement. And it was all done on the job site, essentially, you know, mixed together. Um, basically every contractor was a chemist trying to make, uh, the, you know, the mix, best mix. Um, and, and typically they all required uh, damp or wet curing. Uh, there were no polymers or, or retardants that, uh, that were in there. So it basically re relied upon uh, sheer mass of the grout joint um, and, and by soaking it to uh, to gain strength. Um, and at the time, you know, we were talking, you know, 100 years, 50 years ago, um, at the time, there was very limited types of, of tiles. There's quarry tile, um, brick pavers, uh, white body ball wall tiles, um, and they're all ceramic with high absorption rates. Uh, there was little to no porcelain that pretty much showed up about 50 years ago and, and more recently. Um, so that density was much different for, for uh, a water absorption. You know, even back then, um, if floor grouts were having a hard time uh, drying, uh, the joints were normally filled flush um, by dusting some dry grout on the surface um, of the wet joints and then rubbed with like burlap bags um typically they do sawdust to kind of help polish the grout joints dress them up nicely um and burnish them those are early days of uh cementitious grouts but of course like anything technology changes um technology advances so not just the white body wall tile um or the clay floor tiles and the glazed tiles but more porcelains came came about 
uh, glass tiles came about. They're now nowadays they're stainless tile. There's marble, many different types of marbles, and with that, of course, was the manufacturing of these tiles. Manufacturing got better. Uh, manufacturing became more advanced. Um, so basically, you know, you've got now you've got much more narrow grout joints. Um, you've got thinner tiles, so the depth is much less. So to, uh, to get that strength, it's much less mass. So of course, the technology for grout had to change as well. And we've talked about this, so just, you know, less absorptive tiles, narrowing joints, shallowing joints, um, a lot of new, new materials. So of course, the product can't rely on the mass for hydration. So grout had to evolve. So basically, uh, one thing that was uh, initially uh, brought to the market was um, liquid additives. So having additives um, built into these grouts, um, late, built with latex and acrylic additives, um, basically giving it more strength making it easier to use. Um, then as we evolved even further, uh, probably in the 80s, 90s, um, we started having more dispersible polymers and they were basically powders that were built into the product so that they were essentially just water mixed. So you didn't add the what they called like a milk to the, uh, to the grouts, to the dry grout. Now you've got everything all in one. Um, Basically, you know, with the more flexibility meant less cracking, less powdering of the grout, uh, lower absorption rates meant that the grout would resist staining, um, you know, giving these installations much longer of a lifespan. Um, and, and by having this new chemistry, you know, it allowed for these grout systems um, to have less risk, um, to last a lot longer, and to give a lot more performance to the product. Um, these, these polymer mixes also, you know, they're, they're now incorporating antimicrobial technology. Um, they have much higher stain resistance because the, um, the products have much lower absorption, um, lower porosity just gives that higher stain resistance. On to, uh, more improvements. So. Of course, um, the grout has to change as tiles change. And the issues that we were seeing in the market, weak and powdery grout, efflorescence, um, discoloration, blotchiness, uh, hay grout haze, grout cracking, all of these were limited or, or almost eliminated um, based on these new polymers that were being added into the grout. Um, once again, you can always see the NTCA's uh, Cement Grout Troubleshooting Guide uh, for any information uh, to prevent these types of most common uh, grout problems and issues in cement grout. Uh, when to use cementitious grout. So it's, it's pretty much in, in any type of installation, um, you know, submerged, exterior, interior. Um, Kind of the limitations that the cement grouts have would be when there's when there's basically a high chemical exposure, and that's kind of when you when you want to make that leap and make that step, I guess, up to um, epoxy grouts. But essentially, any type of tile or stone um, can be you can use cementitious grouts. Um, of course, when there was you know, years ago, it was always a, a concern of scratching tiles. Um, of course, today there's a litany of, of porous tiles, porous stone that are being used um, that as always, you know, should always test a small area before you make a full installation with any type of uh, tile, uh, grout that could scratch. But, um, you know, there's always a, 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 every manufacturer always has an unsanded version as well. And today's tiles, Typically, people are using unsanded just because, you know, a lot of the uh, a lot of the tiles now could scratch. You've got metal tiles, or stainless steel tiles, or uh, marble, or 
even uh, some other types of, uh, you know, tiles that could possibly uh, get scratched or etched, um, you would definitely want to use an, an unsanded grout. A lot of times it was just to get down to that very narrow grout joint, like a 16th of an inch. But most of the grouts today have such a fine aggregate that you can actually get down to that 16th of an inch. And of course, always with cementitious grouts, like I alluded to earlier, um, when there's a lower chance of staining or any type of chemical deterioration, that's when you can use a, uh, a cement grout. But with, you know, with cement grouts, we talked about this earlier. Um, you know, it could be uh, even, even with all of the chemical and performance improvements um, to, to grouts, there's still, you'll still see some typical job site uh, issues and problems. There's always uh, shade issues. It could be, you know, a day after. It could be uh, temperature ranges. It could be the type of water you're using. Um, you'll see soft and powdering grout at times as well. Um, sometimes effluence um, could be a common occurrence as well. Uh, that's always a reaction with, you know, the chemicals inside of that uh, that tile or stone, along with some of the, uh, you know, the salts and everything that are in. Um, sometimes Portland cement grouts specifically. Um, so the re results are sometimes, um, you know, not consistent. Uh, you know, there's always, and every manufacturer is always trying to mitigate any one of these issues by adding new additives, uh, new chemicals. Um, you know, even in my, you know, short history of eight years within, uh, you know, this industry, um, there's always advancements, there's always new chemicals that we're always adding, but there are sometimes just limitations to uh, cement grouts. And of course, we talked about this earlier, um, you know, chemical resistance, you know, with, with a cementitious grout, just they, they don't have, um, you know, the chemical resistance, they, they typically require periodic sealing um, and that type of maintenance to maintain the color and to maintain uh, you know, a, a lesser porosity so it doesn't stain. Um, you know, we, they have a very low chemical resistance, hence the evolution into you know, epoxies and furans um, in the market. Uh, you know, they typically can be stained by normal household uh, items, ketchup, wine, mustard, et cetera. Um, just due to their porosity. And sometimes it's it's due to the texture, especially a sanded grout, that texture, um, you know, would actually hold on to a lot of those stains. Um, but we find, you know, we, we're, technology is always moving. Um, we're always able to find better choices for grouts um, in commercial and industrial applications. So here's just a list here of um, everything we've kind of covered. Um, you have standard cement grout, which is ANSI A118.6 grouts, sanded and unsanded versions. Um, you'll see there typically the, uh, the, the grout joint sizes. And then we have our higher performing uh, polymer fortified grouts, which is ANSI A118.7 grouts. Once again, sanded and unsanded. Um, you know, typically that'll get down to a, a smaller grout joint because of the finer aggregates that uh, most manufacturers are using. And then, uh, of course, you have your unsanded grouts as well. So that brings us to uh, the next category of grouts. Um, the, the ANSI A118.3, uh, basically chemical resistant, water cleanable tile setting and grouting um, epoxies. So when to use uh, epoxy grouts, you know, once again, it's, it's basically when you're using any type of tile, um, you know, if you're looking for more strength, uh, if you're looking for definitely more vibrant colors, um, that's definitely, uh, you know, you have a lot more colors nowadays in these epoxies. Um, there are design options too. A lot of manufacturers are making some unique types of epoxies. Uh, and of course, it's when there's a higher chance of staining and uh, chemical deterioration. 
Uh, there might be a few limitations, um, you know, with the resins of epoxies um, within, you know, some marbles. Um, you could have some bleeding. You could have some some issues, um, some picture framing. Uh, once again, with any type of product, always test a small area before you're going to use that product. So the composition of epoxy grout, it's essentially 100% solids um, as ANSI A118.3 uh, standard um, alludes to. And typically uh, it's an epoxy resin and epoxy hardener. Um, basically that kicks off a catalyst, that kicks off a chemical reaction. That is how these products get hard. That's how they get their strength. Um, you know, originally, uh, typically only commercial or industrial applications um, where chemical resistance was needed, um, they would typically use epoxies. And, and when epoxies first came out, um, they were definitely uh, limited in colors. And, uh, and basically, they were, it was kind of a, a very difficult install. Um, but of course, with anything, technology changes. And we go forward. Um, back then, it was you know hot water cleanup. It was a, it was a mess. It was uh, really difficult to, to work with. A lot of times, uh, the epoxy sagged. They would find voids underneath um, tiles. Um, they would sag on walls and on bases. Um, and like I said, the colors were limited. Uh, you were looking at basically a, a black, a gray, or a brown. And that was it. And nowadays, you can have pretty much any color that's needed. So today's modern day technology uh, transformed epoxy um, to multitude of uses. Now it can be used residentially. Um, they're more user friendly. Um, some people even say that it's easier to use an epoxy than it is a cementitious grout. Um, they're a lot easier to spread and clean. Uh, they are non-sagging, still very stain resistant. And like I said, many, many uh, different colors. And even today, I talked about this earlier, uh, while there are many different colors, there's also different types of epoxies as well um, that are in the market today. So uh, you have some types of epoxy that uh, you can add like a glitter to, to give it more of a decorative look. Um, there's, uh, there's additives like glow in the dark that you can add to these epoxies that uh, uh, would make, make a, a unique install, especially for like bathrooms um, where you really don't need a nightlight. You could actually use glow in the dark in your tile um, in the grout. Um, there's also transparent versions now of, of epoxies that you know, will allow light to pass and color to pass, which gives it a very unique um, design aspect. And, um, and many manufacturers are making uh, these epoxies with, with glass beads, glass colored beads. Um, also just another unique way to, uh, to provide a, a unique design concept. Um, On to uh, what we call uh, in the industry, IG grouts, industrial grouts industrial epoxy grouts, um, you know, this is a typical job site um, where industrial grouts are being used, commercial kitchens. Um, basically, that's for the ultimate strength. Um, it, it's because these installs, these, these areas of installation, they're always getting, um, they're always under attack basically. Uh, by food soils, um, by greases, fats, oils. Um, with all of those greases, fats, and oils, you're forming oleic acids. And typically, you know, a lot of the cleaners that are being used are, are, are not washed off. They're no rinse cleaners. There's a couple of reasons for them in the industry. Um, a lot of times they have uh, anti-slip um, uh, built into them. So, so it's definitely something, uh, you know, for insurance purposes and uh, you know, for the, for the staff working in the kitchen, 
of course, when you've got oils everywhere, you want something where there's you know anti-slip properties in the in the in the cleaner. Um, but what happens is a lot of times when you mix all these food particles and oils um, forming oleic acids and these no-rinse cleaners together, it's kind of like a perfect storm that attacks the grout joints. Because of course, um, you know, as contractors always try, they always try to make as flush a grout joint as possible. You know, sometimes there is, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, concaveness to those joints. And this is where all of those things kind of end up um, every night as, as it gets cleaned. And as I said, it's nonstop attack. And you can see here, um, just, you know, that's your typical, uh, typical floor in a commercial kitchen um, that's getting attacked all the time um, by all these different byproducts of cooking um, in a commercial kitchen. And you'll see disintegration, chemical damage. And I mean, this could be sometimes even early as a year after an installation. Um, you know, it's just not the most um, you know, friendliest of places for, uh, for tile and for the grouts. Um, and moving on a little bit here, um, I'm just alluding to real quickly uh, the furan types of, of grouts. So furans were out uh, probably before the IGs per se. Um, they still exist out there as well. Um, it's definitely a, 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 a very high grade of, um, of grout. Once again, for those commercial applications, but you'll find that a lot of a lot of the um, industrial grouts actually do have the same performance characteristics of a furan grout. So once again, you know that's under attack as well in the same type of environments. But with the furans, um, you know it's just a little bit more difficult to install and and actually a higher uh, VOC content. Um, so a lot of times, a lot of people will just use our IG grouts as opposed to the furans out in the market. And once again, it's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of times it's in a, in an environment where there's a lot of heat. Um, you can, you can see it in a lot of, uh, a lot of breweries, um, and a lot of different, uh, chemical plants, uh, where they'll use those furans. And once again, it's, it's, you know, the industrial grade epoxies, um, basically also, um, can be utilized as a furan, as a, uh, ANSI A118.5 uh, epoxy, um, but, but with less VOCs and a little bit easier install. All right, uh, just getting into um, pretty much the last category of grouts here. Um, and whatever you call it in the industry, whether it's uh, um, you know, a one step grout, a premix grout, uh, a ready to use grout, whatever nomenclature you use. This is essentially those products in the market today where you pop the lid, you use it. And, um, and basically, you know, you've got a much faster learning curve. There's, there's no mixing required on job sites. Um, like I said, you pop the lid, you start to use it immediately. Um, you know, there are some limitations with these products, typically. Um, you know, exterior facades, even just using it exteriorly in submerged applications um, and in some high traffic areas, typically, uh, you know, vehicular traffic areas, typically you don't want to use these uh, premix grouts, but you can use them on most tiles. Like I said, they're quick and easy to use. There's, there's really no learning curve. Um, you know, you can start using these pretty much right away um, and try to eliminate a lot of the uh, installation errors um, and the learning process is much quicker. Um, there is no waste, which is another benefit to these products where, you know, you can use half of a, half of a pail of these products and put the lid back on and you can save that for your next, uh, backsplash, your next shower. Um, so it's nice when there's no waste, which is definitely something that the whole industry is moving towards. Um, but like I said earlier, um, typically, they're used in a lot of dry areas, um, but some some products can be used in inter intermittent wet areas as well. Um, once again, I would always, you know, refer to the manufacturer 
refer to their data sheets to find out where they can be used and how they're used. So these uh, one-step slash premix routes, when they came out, and it's it's been over a decade now um, that they've been out in the market, um, and it seems like you know this is where we are evolving to. This is where the next uh, you know the next technology is taking us. And the goal initially was basically to be the best of cementitious grouts and epoxy grouts brought together. Um, you know, it was it was basically to to limit a lot of the problems that these products were having, you know, in the market. Like I said, they're all premixed. They're all premixed at the factory. Once again, there's no job site mixing. Uh, kind of eliminates a lot of those errors. Um, a lot of these products, um, they are basically non-pigmented. So a lot of the aggregates are already pigmented. So um, You've got a very consistent color there. Uh, the product does uh, does have a a very good stain resistance and definitely uh, crack resistance. So a lot of these products uh, have been adopted, and a lot of contractors are using these um, daily. Uh, there's a few, I guess we can call them technologies. There's a few technologies that are being used for these premix grouts. Um, they're typically acrylic based or urethane based. Um, there's some other hybrid technologies as well um, in the market, um, but uh, typically you're going to find them in those two categories. Um, you know, you'll see some silicones being used as well. And right now there is no, there's no, uh, there's no standard in, in the industry as of yet. Uh, the MMSA, which is a, a um, one of the bodies in in the um, tile industry, they are working on uh, a. They're working with all of the um, manufacturers to develop a standard for this product. But it's uh it's been a few years in the making, and uh, hopefully shortly we'll we'll probably see something uh, coming from them um, so that we can have a standard for the product. So what makes this different? Um, uh, definitely the chemical composition is much different. Um, they of course are multi-component and they, they don't have a chemical reaction. So as with your cement grouts and your epoxy grouts, they cure chemically. Um, there's always a catalyst and they get kicked off and that's what gives them their strength. Um, that gives them the, the chemical reaction, but with premix grouts, um, you know, the, their binder is typically uh, made of a polymer. Like I said earlier, uh, basically it's a an acrylic or urethane or even silicone, um, and that hardens by basically drying through evaporation and the loss of loss of water. Um, and and of course, you know, there's there's always challenges with that. Um, there could be a lot of environmental factors such as heat or humidity or moisture in the air um, and that can always change how those products cure um, once again i said this earlier you know if you're using one of these premix grouts uh, my recommendation is always to uh, go onto that manufacturer's website and take a look at their data sheets um, their product data sheets take a look and see where they can be used, how they're used, how to clean them. Um, everyone's got a, a little bit different chemistry out there. And um, it's always great to just always refer back to uh, the manufacturers. Um, basically, it's a way to get the best results from their product. So uh, there's a lit litany of features for premix grouts. Um, like I said, there's no mixing uh, at all. You can pop the lid, start using it immediately. Um, especially if there's no water on the job site or if, if the water, you know, it's just a hard water, you know, you've got, now you've got, don't even have that issue in front of you. Um, typically there's definitely no sealing. Um, like I said earlier, there's normally they're non-pigmented, uh, so there's no color fading. Um, most of them have UV, UV stability, uh, which is great. Like I said earlier, you can save the unused grout. You can do 
with one pail, you could do maybe a couple showers with them, uh, a couple backsplashes. Uh, most in the market today are flexible and crack resistant, um, which I know a lot of contractors always look for. Many of them are made with, um, you know, uh, additives like microband, et cetera, um, for mil mold and mildew resistance. Um, and one big thing that uh, we see the industry moving towards is, is having, quote, dust-free type products. Um, uh, as we all know, you know, silica sand has been um, basically proven to cause cancer. So having uh, dust-free products is definitely a, a, a um, it's, it's an evolution for all of us, um, whether it be grouts or thin sets, et cetera, um, you know, to, uh, to move towards that in the industry. Um, you can get, you know, most of these grouts, they're using those fine aggregates as well. And you can get these down to a 16th of an inch up to a half inch joints. Um, and, and there's once again, many color options, a ton of color options. And there's always there's always limitations to um, you know these technologies as we get into new technologies. Um, you know one big concern with a lot of contractors is haze. Uh, you're using a, an acrylic or a urethane based product. Um, you know if you're, if you're working in a hot environment, as soon as you you use these products, if you're putting it on a, a hot a hot tile or a hot stone, it's it's it definitely cures up very quickly and leaves a haze there. Um, so a haze is always a, a major concern with these products. Um, the slower curing, just because it has to have that water loss. So definitely these products cure a lot slower. Um, you know, on average, I'd say probably about 24 hours for light traffic, um, 72 hours for heavy foot traffic. Um, typically it's seven days before um, cleaning or water exposure, typically. Um, once again, it's, it's limited water resistance just because it needs to eliminate the water to get hard. So if you're adding water to it, um, in the short term, you, you could re-emulsify some of these products, um, which will definitely just slow it down or, uh, or be a real detriment to that grout joint. Um, most are not geared towards, uh, submerged applications. Uh, once again, refer to the data sheets from the manufacturer um to find out which products actually uh, uh can be used um, for submerged applications um they're all pretty much limited for exterior applications and um they do have some chemical resistance uh you know there there are you know some that that handle a lot of chemical resistance once again refer to the manufacturer's data sheet um and you know Nowadays, I don't think there's, there's a lot of um, experienced installers and uh, there is a little nuance to each one of these products out there, um, depending on you know, those mitigating factors of humidity, heat, um, moisture. Um, it's, you know, it might take a little bit to getting used to, but um, once again, it's a lot quicker than um, some of the uh, other grouts where it has to be job site mixed, et cetera. Um, I, I talked about this earlier. There are no current industry standards um, for these types of grouts. They are recognized in the TCNA handbook. Um, I believe it's in the uh, beginning of the TCNA handbook. Um, you know, the manufacturers are involved, um, every one of them, um, trying to set up these, these standards. Um, they use test methods that are already in existence and trying to modify them for these types of products. Um, and like I alluded to earlier, the MMSA is uh, is working on trying to uh, to get that standard going. So the next generation, you know, in in my opinion, and I think it's the opinion of of most of us manufacturers that um, this is kind of uh, where the market is headed. It's it's really uh, going after these premix routes. Um, once again, that's the same goal, trying to get the best, uh, the best out of cement and epoxy grouts, um, trying to really achieve, you know, of course, epoxy grouts, that standard is, you know, the top standard in, in the industry today, um, trying to find 
ways to achieve that standard with these types of products, you know, and, and eliminate a lot of uh, lingering concerns that uh, some contractors may have um, in regards to strength, um, using these products exteriorly, um, using them in, in, in any type of submerged application, fountains, pools, et cetera. And also just haze, um, just trying to eliminate that haze uh, to give you a best looking type of installation. Um, so that, that kind of takes us through the end of all of the types of grout. Um, hopefully I answered a lot of, uh, a lot of questions you may or may not have had. I'm, I'm sure many of you probably are, are aware of these types of grouts. So hopefully I've given you a little bit of insight into all of them. Um, we always, you know, we always want to assist any contractor with, you know, ways to make their job easier. Um, always, you know, look for these in industry documents that can, in, you know, assist them with any of the installation of any grout. Um, there's a whole list here. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, this will be on uh, YouTube, like Jim has said, so you can review these. Um, always a great resource. Every one of them gives great, uh, great ways to, uh, to have a, a quality uh, installation. And once again, as I probably said too many times earlier, but always, you know, look at the manufacturer's product data sheets. Go to those data sheets. That'll give you the best way for you to get the best results with their products. Um, that's definitely, a, you know, another way to get a wealth of information for these products. Um, lastly, I'd, I'd love to uh, tell everybody to please utilize these industry um, leaders when specifying installations. Um, look for companies that are invested in training their crews um, with these joint industry efforts. Um, all of these partners, um, they stress education, they stress standards development so that everybody has a quality installation and everybody uh, can get the, you know, the best the best installation for any product that you're using. So in summary, um, you know, I've said this earlier, you know, technology is, is, is ever changing. Um, you know, nowadays it's, it, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, but especially within our industry, we're always trying to make things faster, easier for contractors to use to get the best results um, like I said, in my short eight years in the market, so many things have happened, um, not just in grout, but in all other aspects of uh, tile and stone setting. But um, chemicals are always advancing. Um, we're always trying to use the best, latest and greatest in the market. Um, you know, a lot of the, uh, the low, low end non-performers, you know, uh, everybody gets left in the wayside. We're all pushing for the next technology, every one of us. Um, we're always looking for quality, sustainability. I think that's that's the next step is 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 looking at, um, of course, green building, um, low VOC products, um, products that uh, have recycled materials, of course. Um, you know that's where all of us manufacturers are trying to go um, forward. Um, and just make a longer lasting installation, make a quality installation. Um, we're always discovering new technology and we're always trying to advance everything we're doing uh, within the market. And I wanna thank everybody who, uh, who attended today. It looks like we had uh, just about 300 people. Um, thank you all for, for listening to me uh, talk about grout for a little while here. Hopefully it took you all away from, uh, from what's going on out in the world. And, uh, and I hope that uh, everybody stays safe. And I think it's time for questions. Ryan, um, you provided lots of best practices and helpful information. I'm certain our audience appreciates your expertise and knowledge. Um, so we do have some questions and let me ask them. So the first one is, so what would be good, a good application for cement grouts? Where would you use those? I think that would be 
pretty much in any type of Tyler Stone um, installation. Uh, the, you know, like I said earlier, there there are some limitations on some of the uh, cement routes, but um, I mean, they've been tried and true for thousands of years. So um, as long as there's no no chemicals being used, you can utilize uh, any type of cement grout. So I that agree. would be submerged, exterior, interior, um, pretty much anywhere. All right, we have another question. Um, does the air in a partially used container of pre-mixed grout affect the quality as time passes? Great question. Um, and I know uh, many of many of us manufacturers, um, what we typically provide is some type of air barrier within the pails of our pre-mixed grouts. Um, and that's strictly because what happens over time, of course, is once you open up that pail, you're incorporating air. And by incorporating that air, you're gonna start that, that curing process. Um, so many of us will just provide that, that air barrier, whether it be um, some type of saran wrap or, or a plastic um, small lid. Um, it's just for best results to utilize that product over and over again, keep that little piece of plastic, keep that uh, saran wrap so that you can re kind of quote reseal that product so you can get a longer lasting um, uh, product. Uh, as far as deterioration, um, I, I would definitely look at uh, whichever manufacturer you bought that product from. Um, take a look and see what their shelf life would be after the product is opened. All right, great. Here's another question. Are A118.3 water cleanable epoxy mortars and grouts the same as or in interchangeable with a118.5 furon mortars and grouts? Okay, so yes and no. Um, no, because A118.5 is obviously a very specific um, specification. Um, what most of us manufacturers say um, with our industrial grouts that uh, we basically achieved the performance of a furan grout. So we can achieve the performance, but is it a is it a furan grout? It is not. Um, but many of us get that uh, get that furan strength, I could say. All right. Next question. Discuss the use of grout release. When, why, and benefits of its use. Okay. So grout release, great question. Um, a lot of times that would be with any type of uh, type of like porous um, stone or tile. That would be a great use of grout release. Or if you just don't want, you know, haze, uh, whether it's cementitious haze or epoxy haze or premixed haze, um, you know, using, using those um, would definitely help um, limit any type of haze um, that you would have. Even, even tile or stone with rough texture, um, you know, you should all test an area um beforehand but that would be the best use uh for those all right so in regards to epoxy grout thin set some of them can be used both ways as thin set and grout are all of them of it, uh, able to be used as grout and thin set um not all of them um as per uh some of the manufacturers data sheets um, there are a few that actually do, um, that can be used for both, but I would always refer to the, the manufacturer's data sheets. Um, I can speak on, on my behalf for, for, you know, spectral lock. Um, we don't recommend it. Um, but I know that, uh, some other companies can, I know Ardex, um, they do have a product that does both, but, um, I would, like I said, I would always just refer to the manufacturer's data sheet. Uh, for those that can be used as both um, an adhesive and um, a grout. Uh, within our translucent epoxy, we have a pro premium translucent. Uh, we do recommend that you can use that as a set of material as well as a grout. But once again, I would always just check the manufacturer's uh, website, go look at their data sheet, and they'll definitely be able to tell you or call their technical, technical services department 
Um, each one of our, us manufacturers has one, and uh, I'm sure they'd be more than willing to help you out. All right. And what grout would you, what type of grout would you recommend for pools? For pools, I mean, I personally would recommend an epoxy. Um, that's typically what we would recommend, uh, but you can still use a cementitious grout. Uh, I would, of course, use a uh, ANSI A118.7 type of cementitious grout. Um, but, you know, with any pool, obviously there's chemicals involved. So I would definitely like to steer anybody who's putting in a tile pool to utilize it in epoxy grout. All right. If premixed grouts do not have standards at this time, should should a contractor be trying to get them specified on a commercial job? Good question. Um, you know, I, that's a that's a tough one to answer. Uh, we've seen a lot of commercial jobs that have utilized these types of premixed grouts. Um, you know, whether or not they should. I, that all depends on you know what type of commercial job it is, what type of traffic it's getting, what type of uh, cleaning regimen uh, it's going through, um, you know what type of tile, the size of the grout joint, uh, where it's being used, is it walls, is it floors? Um, you know some manufacturers do warranty that in, in those types of commercial jobs. Once again, it's always you know always refer back to. Um, you know, the, the manufacturer's website, look at their data sheets, and they'll definitely be able to tell you where and when to use those. Um, so we've seen it used numerous times um, within those commercial jobs. So Ryan, I would think an easy answer on this situation would be if you want to get one of those grouts specified into a commercial job you're doing, talk to the manufacturer of that grout and have their architectural rough work with you to get that done because they'll also let you Excellent. know if it's right or wrong correct absolutely yes yes yep great absolutely. all right what would cause cracking or powdery joints in a modified grout do we have time we have time i'm here okay i was kidding that's a long answer oh, oh no <laughs> um you know it could be it could be any type of movement um, over watering typically would, would cause that. Um, a lot of times it's a lot of uh, over watering, even, even using too much water um, in the washing process um, could have that happen. Um, sometimes the type of water, um, you know, it could also be the environment it's being used in. Uh, you know, is there a lot of sun? Um, is, is there a lot of heat? Um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of factors that could cause uh, cracking. You know, are there places where there should be an uncoupling membrane being used um, where there isn't, and there's that movement, and that could crack it as well. I agree. So, what are the best practices to mitigate haze in epoxy grout cleanup? Um. That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I speak on behalf of who I work for and, you know, for us, um, we do have wash packets that do come with um, Spectralock. There's a, there's a, a first and a last, last wash packet that uh, helps break down those, that haze. Um, you know, you can always watch, uh, watch your timing, you know, how you wash. You want, you want to look at that manufacturer's recommendation um, you know, not wait too long. You wait too long. I mean, that 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 epoxy could bond to that tile, and it's going to be a very difficult time to get it off of there. Um, you know, a lot of times it's also the type of tile or even stone that you're using. Um, you know, if there's a rough texture, um, you don't want to wait too long. You really want to get on there and start cleaning that um, shortly, without having a you know detriment to the to the grout joints. Um, and uh, always with epoxies, changing your wash water often. Um, you, you notice you know, a lot of contractors, they go through sponge after sponge after sponge. And that's just because you're picking up those resins and those resins just stick to those sponges and make them very gummy. 
And, um, you know, we always recommend, you know, have, have a couple wash waters with you. Uh, start with one clean one. And after, you know, a few square feet, could be 50 square feet, depending on, you know, what type of uh, grout joint you're working on. Um, always have that second wash water and, and probably a, at least a second set or a third set of sponges ready to go um, to help limit um, any type of haze that you're getting. All right. Um, let's see what the next one is here. Um, so I just want to say to uh, a couple of people just say they logged in late and want to know if they can uh, replay this at a later time. Please go to the NTCA YouTube page and um, you'll be able to watch this starting Monday. It will be loaded sometime tomorrow and ready for Monday to watch. If you subscribe, you'll be notified of all of our upcoming pro, uh, videos on YouTube and uh, be able to watch them at any time. All right, let's see here, what else? Uh, we, got, we got a few more here. Um, and I think you answered this, right? Epoxy, epoxy grout is the best option for submerged insulation. Uh, we would, we would definitely uh, recommend that. Just you know, just because of, you know, any type of chemicals that are in the pool, chemical imbalances, um, you know, like we talked about in our in our um, webinar here, um, you know, if you have any type of chemicals that are going to be used, it's always better to use an epoxy than a cement grout. All right. Um, is it acceptable to mix a partial bag of powder grout? Absolutely. Um, I think any manufacturer would would definitely uh, allow anyone to do that mixing partial bags. Um, I think every contractor does that. Uh, we've done numerous um, surveys out to contractors, and I know with um, our permacolor type grout, um, most contractors will take half of a 25 pound bag and mix that and then take the other half. So um, yes, and a lot of times it comes down to touch-ups. Um, when you have touch-ups, you definitely have to use obviously, uh, you know, a small amount of grout to, uh, to fix up any small areas. So that is fine. All right, um, let's see. Let's see here. I know the standards are still in development, but why? But would more flexible, ready to use grouts be able to get away with less expansion joints in a given installation? Great, Aunt, great question. No, uh, that is a great question. <laughs> um, you know, we would we would always recommend you follow any standards um, that are in place. Um, you know, look at NTCA's. Uh, uh, 118.10 um, for installation of, of tiles. Um, really, no substitute for for any uh, any type of um, movement joint, honestly. Um, and I wouldn't consider a, a flexible grout um, a way to eliminate those movement joints. Yeah, our industry would agree with that exactly, for sure. All right, do epoxy grouts, do all epoxy grouts yellow with time exposed to UV rays? Another good question. Uh, you know, it, it comes down to whatever chemicals are being used in those epoxy grouts. Um, it is a very common situation, um, especially when those uh, epoxy grouts are being used um, exteriorly, but um, you know, not every single one does. It sometimes comes down to um, how much sun they're receiving. Um, so it's it's kind of a, you know, any product could probably discolor when exposed to UV rays. I think it all depends on on the insulation where it is. Darker colors can normally fade, but they probably won't. I guess yellow. Correct. All right. Great. So we have time for maybe one or two more. So here's the next one. Um, uh, everybody, if we don't get to your question, please look on your chat screen, okay? Your question screen, I just sent you Ryan's email address and you can definitely email your questions to him and I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them. Absolutely. Um, are any of the grout types better or are they bad for heated tile systems? Oh, good question. 
Um, you know, once again, it always comes down to what type of installation you're doing. I think they're they're all good. Um, they all can be used. Um, we don't really put any limitations on them per se, uh, just because obviously you have to follow specific standards for those heated systems. Um, I would just say I always recommend wait for the product to cure um, before turning on those systems, no matter what. Um, that would be a you know the first and foremost key to making sure that uh, you have a a good installation with those grouts. But once again, you know check with the manufacturers, check with their technical services department. Um, uh, we really don't have too many limitations. Once again, just you know make sure that product cures before you even start utilizing it. Great. Okay, so this question is, where do you subscribe uh, to the NTCA YouTube page? Uh, you just go to uh, YouTube and put in NTCA YouTube channel, and at the bottom, right at the bottom right-hand corner, there'll be a button to sub subscribe. Hit that, and you can subscribe. I want to thank everyone for coming to today. I have to tell you, we ended up having over 500, 528 people registered. Many people registered and came on late. Um, so uh, thank you all. Uh, we will have an invite going out tomorrow for our next webinar, which is on the 14th of April, Tuesday. Practical advice for dealing with the impacts of corona, corona, coronavirus on construction. Uh, Everybody really, Ryan did a great job. Thank you. Please, uh, please uh, look for your next invites and uh, we will talk to all of you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much.